Hold on to your needle dicks. It's episode 12 of the forecast. I eat the coal and cancer from a boar's ass. Uh, let's talk about opioids. Maybe a little bit of drug dealing on top of that. Opioids. How did I get hooked on those little bastards? And end up so constipated I could only shit once a week and I couldn't shit without tearing my asshole and fucking bloodying up the toilet. Ended up on methadone and shit. Uh, yeah, so I guess it all started with perks. One of my co-op buddies would just steal a bunch from his mom and then I'd trade him some weed or some blow for it. And, uh, at this time I had a place in London and would just be at my parents in Aurora, so I would just be going back and forth all the time. And didn't realize I was addicted. I would have these, uh, I would have those withdrawal dreams where you're, you got the pills in your hand, but no matter what, you just can't eat them. And, uh, fucking, yeah, weird withdrawal dreams. Fucking dreams in general. Maybe that's an episode to talk about. But anyways, and then I figured out that these perks, um would help me fall asleep after doing coke and trying to jerk off all night. And, you know, it would make my nose would be unstuffy. The next morning, I'm all sketched out, fucking catching drips from the night before, you know, being like, where the fuck were you last night? And, uh, catching sketchy morning drips. And I know I'll eat a few perks, and then my nose won't be so stuffy anymore. And I remember, to the point where I was eating, like, four perks at a time, maybe a couple times a day, I had a couple of buddies I was hanging out with, and they're like, oh, you're gonna die, you're gonna kill yourself, and blah, blah, blah. And those guys are both dead. We used to, every Sunday, get together and watch Intervention, and uh, we would laugh, and, you know, we're like, well, no, we're not as bad as that guy, and as long as we're not as bad as this guy, and uh, they will die a week within each other, and uh, I guess I was maybe two years clean at that point, and yeah, it could have been me, could have been me. I can't really watch Intervention anymore, it's not as funny as it used to be, but uh, yeah, eventually, I remember for a long time being like, I'm never going to do Oxys, just perks. Not realizing, you know, that perks are oxys. It's just five milligrams of oxy. And, uh, started taking the 20s, the pinkies, when I couldn't find any perks around. So I just take the 20s and be like, I'm never gonna buy an 80. That's just way too much. I'll end up addicted. And then, you know, chewing through 40s, eventually graduate to the 80s. And then my buddies are all sucking on fentanyl patches and sticking them on their foreheads and shit like that. And, uh, like, oh, that's crazy. I'll, I'll never do a fentanyl patch. That's fucking, that's nuts. And then I couldn't find any oxys or perks. I was like, oh, let's, let's do fentanyl patches. And then you just rinse and repeat the same thing with the heroin. You know, I'll never do heroin. And then, and uh, I had a good buddy that, uh, when I was growing up, he was like a music prodigy in the early 90s. Too Bad to Be True was the, uh, his music group. Won a Juno for, uh, like, the best single or hip-hop single or something uh, in their early 90s. You don't know what a Juno is. It's Canada's biggest music award. And he would always warn me because I would, like, work with his buddies and uh, be like, oh, you keep doing this shit, you're going to end up doing oxys. End up, you keep doing oxys, you're going to end up on heroin. I'm like, no way, I'll never end up doing heroin and shit. And, uh, yeah, he was right. And he ended up a fucking full-blown junkie, too. You know, no more Juno awards and shit like that. And opioids, yeah, the side effects. One of the side effects is, uh, it's fucking impossible to come. Like, you can fuck forever. You can never get a right perfect heart on, it's always a little soft. But you can fuck forever to where it's like a mission. And chicks always say they want a guy to last long in bed. Well, fuck a guy on oxys or fentanyl patches and then see what you have to say about it. But yeah, it makes your dick floppy. Mission to come. So when I was doing coke and oxys, trying to jerk off every night, oh, what a mission, man. I'm hawking back big drips, spitting them on my dick, making, them even, making it even more numb. Fucking more impossible. But uh, the opioids. The, there's, opioids were so popular when they were being pushed on everybody by Big Pharma that they even had to come out with a prescription um, laxative, a prescription constipation pill because opioids were so huge and so widespread that there were so many people constipated from them, they had to make a specialty laxative. And goddamn, those, the fucking constipation from those oxys and shit is no joke, man. I don't know how a little tiny pill can fucking bung you up so much, but I guess it's because it kills all the, all your nerves and stuff. You don't feel nothing, nothing works properly. But yeah, dude, I'd shit once a week and it'd be terrifying. That whole week, all I'd be thinking was how much food I've eaten and how the fuck is this stuff gonna come out of me without tearing my asshole open, which it would do. And I uh, had a hemorrhoid once, and I was afraid it was ass cancer. And I never go to the doctor unless it's like I'm really scared, and they're like, no, it's just a hemorrhoid. And uh, I think I popped it once, and it fucking bled like crazy. And then, uh, and then it went away the next time. 
what else? So the constipation, one time, super, I had to shit big time. So I'm living at the cripple's house now after he's thrown himself in front of a car to get a big pill lawsuit. And it's prescribed fentanyl patches. So I gotta take this shit, and it's not coming out, but and, but it's past the point of return. So like, you know, sometimes you can pull back, but uh, this thing was jammed, or this log was fucking jammed. Not going in, not going out. I'm on the toilet, like, wincing in pain, crying but without the tears, like, begging God for mercy. I'll quit drugs if you let this piece of shit come out of me. And then uh, I'm waddling out of the toilet to go smoke cigarettes and sniff a bunch of coke, because that usually will help you shit. It's not working. I end up laying on my stomach for, like, six hours, waiting, you know, to, for the feeling that this poop is, you know, going to make out make it out, you know, like my butts maybe squished enough. It was to the point where I was sticking Q-tips and stuff up my ass trying to break this turd off to try to get it out and uh, nothing was working. Six in the morning the next day, um, I'm like, fuck it, I gotta do it. And luckily the cripple had thrown himself in front of a car to get a lawsuit because we had the handicap, you know, an extra six inches on the toilet with the rails. So I just grabbed on and fucking, hey, <laughs> popped that shit out, blood everywhere. <laughs> and all the watery shit that came behind it. And that's the end of episode 12, talking about shit and opioids and all that stuff. Have a good day, hold on your dicks.